question is there still hope of improving your kidney function when you are in stage five this is what we are going to ask today to one of my patients a man who was able to witness an incredible miraculous healing his egfr went from 12 to 41 in three months Catherine here, I'm a doctor of natural medicine and today's video is a story of hope, a story of resilience and courage when the situation seems beyond hope. Stage 5 CKD is, for many people, the stage where doctors shake their heads and say, there is nothing more they can do. And this happened to my patient as well. In fact, he was told by his doctor to go talk to a naturopath because there was no hope left in conventional treatments. Now, let me be honest. My first meeting with this patient wasn't the easiest. I had to tell him that dialysis was on the table. Nobody wants to hear that. And the thing about dialysis is that, well, it's but it's still a lot better than not being able to eat or to breathe. Yeah, I know what a great way to give a patient hope. I'm the greatest motivator ever. I mean, who wouldn't be thrilled to hear that their new hub involves sitting in a clinic for hours several times a week? It's like joining the least fun club imaginable with the worst snacks. Anyway, I believe in telling the truth, not giving false hope. And you know, I didn't just drop this bomb and then leave the patient to handle the aftermath alone. I did my best to help him because I believe the real power comes when you know the cards you're dealt and you play them anyway. In fact, despite the grim outlook or prognosis, this patient didn't just survive. He thrive his egfr went from 12 to 41 in just three months so how did he do it it took three key steps and today i'm sharing every single one of them with you now guys before we start please keep in mind that i will never violate patient confidentiality this particular patient gave me explicit permission to share a small part of their story here and they also posted a comment on this channel to add some more info with that said let's start now with the first step this involved two life-saving medications. Now listen, the first thing I had to do was go over all the work his other doctors had done. His primary care doctor, his nephrologist, his endocrinologist. I checked everything because no amount of supplements or natural remedies are going to help if conventional medicine is being overlooked. That's like trying to build a house starting with the chimney. It's just not going to work. Now, going through his medical records was like reading a mystery novel with missing chapters. I half expected to find a prescription for lectures in there somewhere. So the first thing I did was to give his patient a list, a list of the treatments he should have been receiving all along. And no, I'm not talking about kale smoothies or herbal teas. I'm talking about those little orange pill bottles, the kind you pick up from the pharmacy medicines he needed starting from years ago from his doctor so i sent him back to his doctor arm with a grocery list of lab tests i needed to see and a list of meds he needed to be on and well let's just say this particular doctor hasn't sent me new patients ever since still wondering why maybe doctors just don't appreciate it when you point out that they're missed a few minor details like essential medications or maybe i'm just too good at my job who knows anyway my patient was eventually started on two crucial medications paracalcitol two micrograms a day and sevelomir 600 milligrams three times a day please pay attention to these two medications paracalcitol and sevelomir so question why are these medications so important well because a very large number of cgd stage 4 and 5 patients need them Yet, for some reason, a lot of patients who need them don't actually get them. And that's a problem. Why? 
because I believe these medications played an important role in my patient's miraculous recovery. Paracalcitol, this is a vitamin D analog, right? And you probably already know by now why this vitamin is so important for the health of your kidneys. Having the correct levels of vitamin D is especially crucial if your goal is not ending up in dialysis. This is true for all the stages. But while for stage 3 patients usually supplementing OTC vitamin D works, OTC supplements don't help anymore in CKD stage 4 and 5. So are you in stage 3? Congratulations! You can take your run of the meal vitamin D supplement from the grocery store or from Amazon.com and your vitamin D levels are going to be okay and your kidneys are going to be safe but what if you are in stage 4 or 5? You see, the kidneys play a crucial role in converting inactive vitamin D into its active form. When kidney function declines, especially in stage 4 and 5, they can't activate enough vitamin D anymore. This causes faster kidney function decline. So that's what paracalcitol is for, alright? When over-the-counter vitamin D supplements just don't work anymore, Paracalcitor or similar medications provide an active form that's already activated. This helps with proteinuria if present, with bone health, with blood pressure, and ultimately it protects the kidneys. So you see my patient couldn't have improved without it. But what is Sevelomir then? This is a phosphate binder. Some patients need it because, well, when vitamin D levels drop, things start spiraling. Phosphorus levels rise, parathyroid hormone goes crazy and is that bad you ask? Well, let's just say that high parathyroid hormone can make even getting off the couch feel like climbing Mount Everest. Seriously, you'd be so tired even your dreams will involve you taking a nap. And high phosphate? Let's just say your kidneys will feel like they've been hit by a freight train with no brakes. So do you remember what I was saying about making sure you are receiving all the treatments you need? Yeah, avoiding that your kidneys get hit by a freight train called high phosphate level is why. And that's what Sivelomer is for, controlling serum phosphorus levels and avoiding this domino effect of complications. Question, do you need these medications? Of course, not everyone needs these two medications specifically. As I was saying, for some patients, regular vitamin D is just enough. And for others, a calcium-based phosphate binder like calcium carbonate may be the best approach to control high phosphorus levels. It really depends on your individual needs and that's why understanding your unique situation is so important. I know, I know. All of these can sound complicated, but dealing with CKD stage 4 or 5 is complicated. And guys, you're not alone in this journey. If you're feeling unsure about which treatment options are right for you, I'm here to help. I offer remote one-on-one -on -one consultations. Through these sessions, I've had the privilege of meeting some amazing people from this community. People who are knowledgeable about their health and determined to make positive changes. People who were actually willing to give up, you know, hamburgers and steaks with the goal of a better kidney health. And with my guidance, they're taking their health to new levels. And I've decided to free up more time in the coming weeks to help even more of you with my expertise. And if you're looking for answers and a plan that's personalized for you, now is a great time to reach out. Send me an email to katherine at newhopeforkidneypatients.com and we can talk. You'll also find a link in the description to contact me directly. Okay guys, back to the three key steps that lead to this patient improvement. The second step is of course the renal diet. So if you'd ask me what's even more important than medications, the first thing I'd mention is the renal diet. Guys, it's no secret that the plant-based, low-protein renal diet is what's doing the heavy lifting here. Yeah, this is my secret. The diet. Now you know, this is why my patients are improving. And of course, these patients deserve all the credit for their improvement. 
trust me when I say that even if my approach is quite unique, it is a lot easier to invent and personalize a renal diet that works than it is to follow it. Now guys, to show you how hard some of my patients are working to achieve a better health, I want to tell you about a different patient of mine that also improved their kidney health significantly. Now, this other patient had a GFR of 22 when I first met her and I received an email from her exactly while I was preparing today's video, so I decided to include her story as well. Anyway, during my first counseling session with her, I started this patient on this diet and and that was about two months ago. Today, she came back to me proudly showing her last lab reports. And her GFR, it was 39, which is frankly a huge improvement. And I know that this may almost seem like I get patients to achieve incredible improvements on a daily basis. But this is not actually how this works, unfortunately. So there is this lady I consult for one hour and that I started on a renal diet and she, well, she improved. But it was not easy for her because she really likes food. Look, not everyone cares about food the same. Some of us care about food, some don't really think about eating that much during the day. But this person in particular was really missing her weekly restaurant dinner with her husband. She was really missing her boiled Maine lobster in particular, but I had to forbid her from eating that dinner and any other dinner based on, you know, meat, poultry, or fish. However, I'm glad I did that because today I received an email from this person and she was like, Hey Catherine, I'm following your diet and my creatinine dropped from 2.9 milligrams per DL to 1.7. My EGFR went from 22 to 39. And then she concluded asking, am I allowed to go out for boiled main lobster dinner with my husband now? And guys, I was shocked. Not just because getting that kind of improvement after just one counseling session is outstanding, but also because this person didn't really seem to notice what kind of achievement she got. Or maybe she was so convinced my method was going to work that this only seemed normal to her. I don't know, but my first reaction was to tell her, forget about your husband, I'll take you out for dinner, even in Maine. I need to know everything you are doing right now. I need to write a paper about it. This needs to be published on a medical journal. And maybe I'll do just that, but guys, this story comes with a moral, all right? So tell me, in your opinion, what should I say to this lady about that boiled Maine lobster dinner? Would you tell her to go celebrate if you were me or would you tell her to, you know, stick to her diet because it is working incredibly well for her? Please let me know what you think about this. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Okay, guys. So that was the second step, the diet. The third step is something I call getting two birds with one stone. Okay, let's talk about specific supplements and dietary food choices for a moment. Because you know, the treatment for kidney disease is not just for beating meat and fish. I mean, if it were that simple, I just open a no steak for you clinic and call it a day. Imagine the Yelp reviews on that place. No, what I do is also focusing on finding the best foods for the patient to eat and the best supplements to support this diet. And you see, when you only get to talk with a patient for one hour, mentioning too many things all at once may get confusing. What I do to try and avoid this is sending a lot of stuff in writing, you know, via email so the patient has some info they can get back to because i mean who doesn't love homework after a doctor's consultation anyway i also try to focus on foods and supplements that have multiple positive benefits i'll give you some examples you may benefit from as well let's say you are suffering from both proteinuria and anemia well, in that case, you may probably receive a recommendation for a supplement, Astragalus. This remedy is extremely powerful for the kidneys of, well, everyone, but it has two main benefits. It reliably lowers proteinuria in CKD patients, which is amazing, and it also really helps a lot improving hemoglobin levels. 
Now, this amazing combination of benefits is the reason why I often recommend 500 milligrams to 1000 milligrams of astragalus extract taken two times a day. Now, let's say a patient has both kidney and liver problems. This is more common than people think, especially in CKD patients. This happens because kidney and liver issues share many risk factors such as diabetes and high blood pressure. And one of the best recommendations for someone who has to deal with liver issues as well is NAC. And acetyl sustain or NAC is simply amazing for the liver because it is an incredibly powerful antioxidant. It protects both the liver and the kidneys by simply reducing the oxidative stress. Oxidative stress damages all the cells in the body and it's a key pathway in which diseases such as diabetes damage the kidneys. This is why I often recommend 500 milligrams of NAC taken on an empty stomach. So, these are two examples of two birds with one stone. Let's talk about food now. Let's say someone has high cholesterol and diabetes. Well, in this situation, nothing can beat a good old cup of oatmeal. Oats are one of those foods that have documented health benefits that you will see at your next lab test report. Add them to your breakfast, possibly as a way to replace something else, and you will see your cholesterol go down fast. You see, oats have a special type of fiber called beta-glucan that pulls cholesterol from the bloodstream and binds to it in the intestine. Then this cholesterol gets removed, and this means that you don't even have to eat oats at the same time as foods containing fats or cholesterol for it to work. What not many people know about oats is that they are also amazing for diabetes. This is what a large review of studies proved about oats, especially try overnight oats with steel cut oats if you are diabetic, as this preparation increases the amount of resistant starch in oats. Now, let's say I have a patient that is suffering from high blood pressure caused by kidney disease. Something I would recommend here is beets. This food is amazing because it contains nitrates, precursors of nitric oxide. This is a molecule that causes the blood vessels to relax and open, improving both blood flow and lowering blood pressure. As an added benefit, these vegetables are super healthy for the kidneys. They are not just rich in fiber, they also are an antioxidant powerhouse. Do not underestimate this benefit. As I was saying, antioxidants are known to prevent oxidative stress from damaging the kidneys. And it's when you start to get more of them, both from supplementation and from the diet, that you can see improvements. In fact, there is one more antioxidant supplement that I want to mention because it's something I recommend most of my patients, CoQ10. Now, this supplement in particular has more than just two benefits. Most important effect here would be the antioxidant benefit, of course, but there is more about CoQ10 than just its antioxidant properties. In fact, this supplement helps with the side effect of many common medications, including beta blockers and statin. These medications are known to decrease the amount of CoQ10 in the body, potentially causing muscle and joint pain. One more reason why taking 100 mg to 200 mg CoQ10 per day really helps is because this supplement has powerful blood pressure lowering properties. Not to mention that a recent meta analysis is also supporting the use of CoQ10 in diabetes patients. And guys, if you want more recommendations to help with the main problems linked to kidney disease, my video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Ciao!